Stocks have lost 50% of their value in the last two market crashes, and it will happen again. In this video, I'm revealing five low-risk investments every investor needs in their portfolio. Five ways to make your money work for you without the roller coaster ride in stocks. We're talking safe investments today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work Creating for you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Hey, Bowtie Nation. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. A special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. We are in the middle of the longest bull market in history with stocks up over 300% since the end of the financial crisis. If there's anything guaranteed about this market though, is that it won't last forever. We see here in a chart of the bull and bear markets all the way back to 1956 that the average losses in a bear market wipe out 28% of investors' portfolios. This is a dangerous time, especially for those of you close to retirement. You don't wanna be like so many investors set to retire before that housing bubble burst and then just watched it destroy their savings. So what I wanna do with this video is share five low-risk investments that you can use to protect your money while still growing your nest egg. Five investments that won't tumble the next time the stock market crash hits. So first I'll cover a few low-risk stock picks and then show you how to create that stress-free portfolio of stocks. I'm then gonna reveal two non-traditional investments because this is really where you're gonna put your money to work. These non-stock investments have the potential to earn double-digit returns with half the risk you'll find in stocks. Now first, let's look at how to pick those low risk stocks for your portfolio. Then I'll reveal three safe stocks you might consider. So the first thing you need to know is which sectors of the economy tend to be the hardest hit by a recession and a stock market crash. Now this graph is based on 10 years through May 2014, so it includes good times and bad for the market. I've included data here for the nine major stock sectors, so related groups of stocks with a common place in the economy like, like financials, technology, and utilities. Now the red line here shows the sector's beta, which is the percentage it tends to change for every 1% change in the overall stock market. For example, with a beta of 142% for financial companies, you'd expect stocks in that sector to move 1.4% for every 1% change in the market, and that's up or down. So if the stock market lost 20%, then you'd expect financial stocks to lose 28%, which is that 1.4 times 20%. Now another example on, on the other side here, we see that stocks of the utility companies have a beta of just 48%. So we'd expect share prices to move about half that of the market. If the stock market fell by that 20%, you'd expect utility stocks to lose just 9.6%, which is 0.48 times that 20%. So this should already give you a great idea of which sectors and which stocks are gonna offer that lower risk in a crash, but we have to look at it from the return side as well. The blue bars here show the annual return for each sector over that same decade. Now we see the shares of utility companies produced a 10.6% annual return, while financials came in with just a 2.7% yearly return. Now the numbers are a little skewed here because of how that housing bubble hit financial companies, but we can still get some great ideas on low risk, high return investments here. So if we look at the sectors with the lowest risk, those that move less than the market in a crash, we see healthcare, consumer staples, and utilities are the sectors that we want to be researching further. And this just makes sense though, right? Uh, people need healthcare and, and electricity even when the economy takes a hit. They still buy toilet paper and food when the stock market crashes. The companies in these sectors have stable revenue and cash flows no matter what the economy does. Now, as you're looking in these sectors for the best stocks to buy, I'd also add dividends and the operating margin as critical fundamentals. So the overall market pays around a 1.9% dividend yield, and, and I'd expect any company in these safety sectors to beat that. Stable revenue and cash flows means that these companies can afford to pay out more to investors, so I'd screen for companies with maybe a 2.5% dividend yield or higher. Those of you in the nation have heard me talk about the operating margin before, but again, this is the single best measure to compare stocks. The operating margin is the percentage of sales left over after a company pays all its business expenses. These are things like marketing and administration. What it tells you is how efficient management is at turning sales into profits. So if we look at an example income statement here, uh, we see sales or revenue at the top with $259 billion for Apple. After the cost of goods or materials, uh, the statement deducts the cost of running the company, these operating costs. Now what you get after removing the cost of running this business, the marketing, the administration, all of these costs is the operating profit. This $64.4 billion for Apple here. 
And when you take that operating profit divided by the sales number, you get a profit percentage for how efficient and how effective the business is run. By comparing that operating margin for different companies in the same sector, competing companies, you get a sense for which are the best of the breed in that group. You get a feel for which companies are managed best and best able to convert sales into profits. Now, I guarantee you, you find the best managed companies in the lowest risk sectors and you've got the making of a stress-free portfolio. Now I want to reveal those three stocks I found using these criteria, uh, those safety sectors with high dividends and the operating margin. First of all, I also want to invite you to a free webinar I'm giving on, on how to put together your own personalized investing strategy. This is something I developed working with private wealth clients and I'm sharing how to do it in this webinar. And the webinar is completely free, but you have to reserve a spot. So I'll link to that in the video description below. Our first safety stock here is CenturyLink, ticker CTL with a massive dividend yield of 7.8% in that telecom space. Now we didn't see the telecom sector in that chart, but it's also one of the lowest risk sectors you'll find. Uh, you're not going to be ditching your cell phone plan when the economy slows down. In fact, looking at these safety sectors, I know a few people I think would forego healthcare and electricity before they gave up their smartphone. Beyond just that idea of safety, I think these pure plate telecom carriers could be in for a wave of cash flow as 5G ramps up. They've already made much of the investment in that new technology and infrastructure, and we're going to get into that revenue side of the picture very soon. CenturyLink has a sector leading 18% operating margin and versus something like AT&T which competes in just all kinds of sectors, CenturyLink is a pure play telecom company. They've got one of the best fiber networks and aren't quite as burdened with debt as some of these other carriers. Our next low risk stock is Exelon Corporation, ticker EXC, and it's 3.1% dividend yield. Now Exelon is the nation's largest utility company and produces in both that traditional regulated utility market as well as in nuclear power. That means profits tend to be smoothed out compared to utilities that only produce from a single source type. Among utility companies, Exelon is one of the best positions for earnings now on, on that traditional power and gas segment, but also in the future with that nuclear segment. Now you'll notice that I've tried to diversify our low risk stock picks across different sectors. That's going to be important because even though these sectors may historically be less risky than the market, you never know what the next crash is going to affect on parts of the economy. So with that in mind, our third pick is from the consumer staple sector with ConAgra Brands, ticker CAG, and it's 3.1% dividend yield. Those of you in the Bowtie Nation are going to recognize ConAgra from our 2019 Dividend Portfolio Challenge. We added the shares to the portfolio in February, and it's been one of our best investments with a 43% return in just 10 months. Now, ConAgra is a leader in packaged foods with 92% of its sales in the United States, something that should protect it as the global economy slows. The company also has some very strong brands in the budget-friendly space like, like Healthy Choice and Banquet that's going to support sales if a recession does hit here in the U.S. ConAgra books an industry-leading operating margin of 17%, which is more than twice that of its closest competitor Tyson Foods. The company is only paying out about 42% of its income for that dividend, so lots of room for growth and more cash flow here. Now I want to reveal those two non-traditional low-risk investments and how to look for these to protect your money. I know we love talking stocks here on the channel, but it's just as important to have some of your money in outside the market when that crash comes. If we look back on that chart of sector volatility, even those three safest stock sectors, uh, utilities, consumer staples, and healthcare, even these three have an average beta of 60% of the market. Now that means if the stock market crashes 50% like it did in 2000 and 2009, you could still be looking at a loss of 30% in these low risk sectors. Now, having some of your money in these non-traditional investments means you have another source to grow your nest egg during any kind of market. So I looked at two factors when picking these low risk investment ideas. Uh, one was low capital and limited downside. You know, I wanted to find investment ideas that anyone could start with no money and that it wouldn't cost you anything even in the worst case scenario. Of course, I also wanted to see those high potential for returns. A low risk investment with a limited downside isn't worth much if there just isn't the potential for that solid return. So I looked at different business models and the investments that provide both. Our first non-traditional investment here is one of my favorites, tax lien investing. Tax lien investing is one of the highest return passive investments you can make and a big part of my real estate investing strategy. So anyone that owns their home knows that the county collects taxes on every property in the district. If those taxes aren't paid, a lien is put on the property and you can't sell it until everything's caught up. Well, the county needs cash to fix that pothole on Elm, so it's going to sell that lien to an investor at an auction. 
Now the investor buys the lien and collects an interest rate plus that lien amount over a period of years. Now what's great about these is that the county continues to collect those back taxes and then just passes the amount owed on the lien directly to the investor. If the lien isn't paid, you might pick up that property for pennies on the dollar. 29 states sell tax liens while others sell the deed outright and some use kind of a mixed approach. We'll look at the process for liens because that's really the lowest risk and a great investment. Understand also that you don't need to be a resident of that state to buy tax liens. In fact, I used to go to Cook County in Chicago and Fulton in Georgia all the time to buy liens. The interest rate you collect on these liens ranges from 10% to as high as 36% in some states, and the time owners have to redeem the lien can go for as long as four years. That means locking in these high interest rate liens for years into the future. Now, tax liens work in a couple of different ways depending on the county. If a property owner falls behind on the taxes, the county is going to put a lien on that property and then put that into a list for an annual auction. Now, you have to register for these auctions and grab that list of properties, sometimes months in advance, so make sure you're planning ahead on this. When you do get to the auction, it's either going to be a bid down on the rates or a bid up on the price. So each property is going to be called and then investors are going to bid the, the rate on the lien down or they'll bid the cost of the lien up. Both of these processes are basically the same and, and just means that you're going to get a lower rate on than the maximum allowed, uh, but you're still looking at about a 12% or higher for most liens. Now, while you're looking at this list of lien properties before the auction, you might want to focus only on residential or commercial properties. Uh, no undeveloped land here. Anything with a building on it, or, or especially if it has a mortgage, there's a 90% or better chance that somebody's going to pay back those, those back taxes rather than let you have that property for the price of the lien. Again, once you own that lien though, the county is going to collect those back taxes and pass them on to you with the interest. If the taxes keep going unpaid, a new lien is, lien is going to be put on each year, so you want to make sure that you have enough to buy those other liens, or you're going to have to share ownership with these other investors. So if the owner never pays the taxes, you can foreclose on the property after that redemption period, which is usually about two or three years in most states. Going back to these criteria though, uh, these are relatively low cost investments. You know, taxes on residential property are usually a few grand or less. You'll never lose your money because you either get that paid back that lien plus the interest, or you get to take control of the property. And the return on these is also very high and it's low risk because the vast majority, especially those liens on residential property are almost always redeemed. Now there are some downsides to lien investing that I want you to know, just so you don't think this is all rainbows and unicorns. First is that there is no secondary market to sell your lien investments, so you better be ready to hold these until they're either paid down or you own the property. Again, you also need to make sure that, that sub those subsequent taxes are paid or you're going to have other investors on claims to the deed. Finally, make sure that you only bid on properties that you would be fine taking control of uh, in that foreclosure. It's rare to foreclose on a property because the bank usually redeems these pretty quickly, but the parcels of raw land are, are sometimes abandoned, so check the auction list when you get it. Our next non-traditional low-risk investment is going to be to start an online business. And maybe you're not thinking this sounds much like an investment, but just hear me out on this. You know, I got a question last week asking which stocks I would buy if I only had $1,000 a year to invest. The problem here is that even on a solid 8% annual return, a grand a year is only going to grow to about $100,000 over 30 years. That's not a bad chunk of change, but, but it's not going to help you retire. Instead, if you don't have a lot of money to invest, you need to start looking for some of these non-traditional investments that are going to make your money go further. So remember, one of those criteria for these investments was low startup costs and limited downside. You can literally start an online business with a website for less than $3 a month. That's how much it costs for hosting with a special deal I negotiated with Bluehost. I, you might spend a little more on extras, but you can easily do this for $20 or less a month. And for example, I spend about $1,500 a month to run my four websites and this YouTube channel, all to produce over 10 grand in income. So we've got a low cost, limited risk business idea that can make you many times that investment. And we're talking owning a website, selling things online, publishing books, so many different business ideas here. Now we've got a lot of videos on different online business ideas here on the channel. I'm going to link to a couple of those videos in the description below. I'll also share that link to the special discount rate to get your website online and a free webinar I'm giving on starting a YouTube channel. Click on the video to the right for my five dividend stocks that will never let you down. Bull or bear market, these stocks are going to put money in your pocket plus a safe return. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.